little beam moves from the top of the stack at layer 7, the application, all the way down to the very first layer, the physical layer, before it gets sent over the wire as either uh, light um, uh, or as um, electrical uh, changes in, uh, in voltage. Where we have adjacent layer interaction and same layer interaction as this thing shoots across from one device to another and then back up, to, up the stack again. It's very important to understand how what you're doing is going to impact how that equipment is functioning with a server. So if, you, if you're on a PC, how it is interfacing with the server. If you're actually working with switches, how those switches, things are broken, what's going on? Well, let's check layer one connectivity first. Okay, we've got layer one connectivity. Do we have layer two connectivity? Is spanning tree broken? Understand these technologies. It will just, it will make you better at what you do. Whether you are working in systems, or whether you're working as a network engineer, or whether you're actually programming. Because when you're programming, what are you programming? Well, you're programming all the stuff that's gonna make all the stuff work, right? So it's almost like being a doctor. Okay, you're a heart surgeon, um, but it, it, it really helps if you understand not just how the heart works, but how all the other stuff that connects to the heart works, right? You don't just go digging into somebody's heart without understanding how all their, uh, how the blood flows through and all the other things that a surgeon would need to know, right? But it just makes you better at what you do. So I'll say at a very, very minimum, start with this foundation. The CCNA is what's going to give you that foundation that's going to help you build those other concepts on top. Does that make sense? And you might find that you really like this stuff. You might really get off on the, on the technology. But what I'd like to do is then at least introduce the fact that Cisco, Cisco Tracks have a, an associate level certification, the CCNA, a professional level certification, the CCNP. This is at least in route, this is route switch.
understand these technologies to the degree that they that they need to uh, in order to be uh, productive in a, in a service provider uh, environment. What we see happening is that the rate of adoption of the MPLS uh, technology, MPLS is a multi-protocol um, uh, label switching. And essentially what it is, is like uh, we're putting switches in the core of the infrastructure as opposed to routing, we're switching. And when we, when we switch, we switch at wire speed as opposed to uh, routing which generally um, uh, is uh, routing happens in software, so it's, it's much slower. And we see the rate of adoption of MPLS uh, far outpacing the number of people who understand MPLS. Okay, so there's a tremendous opportunity for people who understand both BGP and MPLS. Now, unfortunately, um, it's, it's not the kind of thing that you can just go out and you know, read a book and be able to go tell somebody, okay, I understand BGP and MPLS. You have to practice this stuff. But the the uh, the equipment is available to practice BGP and MPLS. Okay, you can get the equipment. You can go buy stuff on eBay for a uh, very small amount of money. Those the 2500 series routers on BGP. Okay, so you can build a small lab. You can buy those routers out on eBay for $25. I know as students, uh, $25 might still be a lot of money, but um, <coughs> You can buy the equipment relatively cheap, and you can also uh, rent the equipment, and there's also software that's available that, that will emulate that equipment, okay? Dynamics and DNS, things like that. You can actually go and build a, uh, an emulation environment to learn these technologies, okay? So some serious big dollars to be earned if you understand BGP and MPLS. These are the service provider I'm talking about, like the AT&Ts, the, uh, the T-Mobiles of the world, okay? If you, if you find that you want to go in that direction. And while we still have uh, MPLS on the enterprise side of the cloud, here we have a service provider. And enterprise. Enterprise being, uh, uh, this is your, this is PSE, okay? And this is uh, AT&T over here. You know, we all have, no. While, um, while PSE does have a substantial amount of our own fiber, you know, we still do have to interface with the service providers ourselves. Uh, and, and we do have the, um, the customer edge, the CE and the provider edge uh, devices. So you, know, you still have to interface with the uh, provider edge devices uh, with your own CE equipment. So there is a small amount of configuration to do uh, BGP MPLS configuration to do on a, on a, um, uh, on a CE router, but uh, not to the extent that you'll see in the service provider field, okay? So if you find that you, you know, while you're studying, you find that you like this, you want to understand BGP and MPLS, this is going to be the direction to go, service provider, okay? Let's go back to, so route switch can pretty much go either direction, okay? You can go enterprise or service provider and route switch. Um, Within the uh, route switch uh, arena itself, there's a tremendous amount that we can do with regard to uh, security. You might find, uh, unfortunately, people tend to tack security on as an afterthought. Where if you uh, exist in the world that I live in, uh, we see it a little differently, and that is it should be viewed more as a system uh, a system that good security should promote good design. It should not impact design, okay? And uh, unfortunately, there is only, uh, there's only about 200 uh, security CCIEs in the nation right now. And for that reason, again, real big bucks, okay? There's about 2,000 uh, security CCIEs in the world today. There's about 24,000 uh, route switch CCIEs. So if you want to um, walk down the path less traveled, you might find that working with the uh, Cisco security technologies is the way to go. If, if, you, if you think that you want to work in uh, network security, then Cisco network security is really all there is, as far as I'm concerned. I, I taught the CISSP material. I taught the security material. I 
going to sit for the CCIE lab in San Jose. I've already passed the written exam. Okay, I'm not coming to you with uh, uh, just information that I've read in magazines and books. I guarantee there's nobody that knows network security like Cisco CCIEs. There's nobody out there. Don't let anybody else tell you any different. So if you think that you want to go computer security, Cisco security is the only way to go. When we have our IT security guys come in and they talk, start talking to me, you know that uh, I work in the network group, securing our routing and switching infrastructure, and we have our IT security guys come in and they, they start to kind of poo poo our Cisco equipment. Um, I, I ask them, um, well, how do you stop a, 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 a VLAN hopping attack? How do you stop a double dot one cube tagging attack? How do you stop a DHCP exhaustion attack? You don't exist at layer two. Everything you do with your firewall is all at layer three. Okay. How do you stop a man in the middle attack? And when they have no answer, um, I basically just rest my kids. Okay, so if you really want to think about network security, uh, Cisco network security is the way to go. And just like any of the other uh, tracks, we start with uh, CCNA security. We also have CCNA wireless, CCNA uh, design, what they call CCDA, CCNA voice. So you start with the CCNA in any of these tracks. You might find that you really like working with the IP phones. Now the, the, the IP phone technology has, I will say, it certainly has matured. The market has responded to the, the, the demand for uh, uh, IP telephony engineers. Um, there are a lot more today than there were uh, six years ago when I was looking at this material. Um, so they don't quite see the salaries today that they saw six years ago. But have no fear, that train comes by again. Right now, we're starting to see things in the popular press that say, is 802.3 Ethernet dead? Is this the end of 802.3 Ethernet? What's going to replace 802.3 Ethernet in the access, in the access uh, architectures? Understand that uh, we're working with a, a tiered hierarchical infrastructure core uh, distribution aggregation access. And in the access technologies, now granted, while we're still going to probably see Metro Ethernet uh, on the WAN side of things and uh, 10 gig and possibly even faster speed Ethernet uh, through the core, um, in the access technologies where I'm living, uh, wireless is beginning to become very pervasive. And guess what? Our peers are not keeping up. What does that mean for you? Lots of supply and demand. A little bit of my econ before I turn it over to you guys. What do we have here? Uh, the quantity, quantity demanded. This is P. This is uh, for, this is dollars, right? And um, uh, quantity demanded. And how does it see the demand is downward sloping, and the supply is upward sloping. Is that right? And as the demand increases, we go from. Uh, P star, right? Isn't that right? As quantity demands, uh, quantity demanded increases, go from Q star, okay? Um, so as that demand curve pushes out, it drives that equilibrium price up. What that means for you is more bucks, okay? And so right now, um, the wireless technologies we are just starting to see uh, that wireless can be deployed uh, faster, cheaper, and it's now faster than our 802.3 Ethernet connections if we're still running 100 meg uh, to the desktop. Because right now, the end technologies can deliver with the, uh, with the beam forming uh, technology, you can deliver up to 300 megs, and you're talking about even more to the desktop. Okay. 
Right now, the, hard, the problem I have is keeping people off the wireless and getting them to stay connected to the wired network because the wireless is that much faster at PSE. Okay? Um, let's see if I can find something real quick. Okay, you're going to verify this for me, right?
fiber optic to the door may be the solution for uh, uh, internet access to your home, we'll probably not see necessarily see fiber optic to every single desktop. The wireless technologies in the access layer uh, are probably going to prevail. So I would say you could probably go either direction in that case. You're not going to find one surpassing the other. They will both uh, continue to um, uh, increase in, uh, in your deployments. Yeah. So the wireless is cheaper to actually put out. It's yeah. cheaper for them to run. Yeah. So the profit margins, because they're charging more for the wireless for the most part than they have for my 4G is going to cost more per megabyte than you can have it at uh, well, understand that I'm not necessarily talking about 4G as much as I'm talking about like uh, uh, 802.11 technologies, 802.11n, and uh, and what it will eclipse 802.11n. I'm thinking mainly in terms of uh, uh, an enterprise wireless as opposed to uh, what we see on our handhelds. Okay, enterprise wireless. So when you go into an organization, because right now, for example, we provide. Uh, both wired and wireless for guests, contractors, and employees to support both voice and data. So we'll need to be able to, just for example, the Blackberries. Um, it's a lot cheaper to run that on an 802.11 network within your organization than it is to let it stay associated with the, the Blackberry server and uh, use 3G or 4G. So we just set the Blackberries up so that they use their wireless infrastructure when they come into PSC. Okay. Yes, sir. No, I'm fairly ignorant to all this, but I'm, the wireless security, is it the same as the fiber optic security as far as how you design it, or is it like totally night and day different? No, well there are things, there are certainly similarities, but there are definitely differences as well. Um, Obviously, when we're dealing with wireless and security, we have to be able to prevent the guy from sitting out in the parking lot with a plumber's logo on his truck with a big old pipe aiming right at our access point, setting up, you guys know what a can antenna is? For the Pringles can antenna? Okay, I think, what's that? That's a Yagi? Is that right? Is that a Yagi? Or a, it's certainly a directional antenna. Well, it, it's, it's very easy to sit out there and if we don't have our wireless infrastructure set up correctly to uh, potentially, I shouldn't be telling you guys all this stuff, but <laughs> potentially we'll say no, to, to take a one access point offline, uh, a, a legitimate access point, to masquerade as a legitimate access point, what's referred to as a rogue, okay, and to get people to associate with, with that rogue access point uh, now instead of with the legitimate access point. And now we've just perpetrated a man in the middle attack. Okay, so now all traffic that's coming, you know, between uh, uh, point A and point B is going to come through me first. Okay, and there might be all kinds of good stuff that I can uh, sniff off that network. Okay, so uh, basic network security is not going to go away. I think what the, the best